genetically engineered organism is the result of a laboratory process of taking genes from one species and forcing them into the DNA of another in an attempt to obtain a desired trait or characteristic. This product is impossible to obtain through natural processes like crossbreeding or grafting. As my advocate mentioned, the general public have the right to know what is in their food, and polls show that more than 90% of Americans want to know if their food is genetically engineered. There are 50 countries around the world, representing more than 40% of the world's population, that already require GMO labeling, including all of Europe, Australia, Japan, India, and China. The free market is supposed to provide consumers with accurate information about products so that we can make informed choices. The U.S. is the proponent of the free market policies. Then why is it not appropriate for U.S. corporations to provide the information freely? In the recent elections, Proposition 37 discussed the issue of labeling GMO-containing foods. My opponent and the anti-Proposition 37 campaign asserts that it will cost the average consumer something like $400 a year. However, Professor Joanna Shepard Bailey, PhD at Emory University School of Law says, consumers will likely see no increases in prices as a result of the relabeling required by the Right to Know Act. According to L. Val Giddings, a senior fellow at the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation, which is a Washington organization supporting policies that favor innovation, he says, I see little potential that the defeat in California could result in any increase in pressure for labels. Let me inform you about Europe. In Europe, the introduction of GMO labeling produces no increase in food costs. David Byrne, former European Commissioner for Health and Consumer Protection of the European Parliament, stated that when Europe introduced GMO labeling in 1997, it did not result in increased costs, despite the horrifying double-digit prediction of some interests. This is a strong case in point to be noted by U.S. corporations and consumers. Moving on to my second claim, that GMO labeling provides greater legal certainty for businesses. Kellogg's has been a particularly visible target since the company strives for a healthy image and yet contributed $632,000 to the fight against the labeling of GMO-containing foods. But for several months, the company's Facebook page has become something of a marketing embarrassment. It is plastered with comments by angry consumers calling the company out for fighting GMO labeling and threatening a boycott until the company changes its ways. According to the LA Times, such labeling would, would not result in significant increases in food costs no matter what the industry tries to tell you. Let me mention another interesting factor. When it comes to the question of getting approvals, the companies always have it easy. For example, the U.S. Department of Agriculture has had over 5,000 applications for field trials of genetically engineered crops. They have never denied a single application. They may brag that they have withdrawn 13 clearly pointing out at their idea of strict regulation. It is a joke, as they virtually have no regulation. Field trials go on when a company simply sends them a letter and says, we are conducting a field trial, and then the approval is granted. Ocean Robbins is the founder and co-host with best-selling author John Robbins of the 65,000 member Food Revolution Network. The widely read Huffington Post quotes Robbins who says, What Monsanto and its allies had not counted on was that despite all their lies and deception, it is actually pretty hard to convince people that they should not be allowed to know what they are eating. And although $46 million managed to put out one fire, it seems to have started about 13 new ones. 
Efforts are already underway to put a similar initiative on the ballot in Washington for the 2013 election, and organizers in 30 other states have also begun building labeling campaigns under the banner of the Coalition of States for Mandatory GMO Labeling. With 93% of the American public supporting the right to know, it looks like it's going to take a lot more than one deceptive, high-budget ad campaign to keep those pesky labels at bay, according to ABC News. Finally, the last claim is that GMOs are linked to several environmental problems, including biodiversity loss, an overall increase in pesticide use, the emergence of super weeds that are threatening millions of acres of farmland, and the unintentional contamination of non-GMO and organic crops. Like all other products about which we want to know more about, decide more before deciding to purchase it, purchase it, food, the basic necessity for a human being, also needs information on its ingredients. If hiding information is the best way they want to do business, then it is not the global practice. The choice has to be the consumers, not the manufacturers.